right, tonight it is it. The TPW singles title that we have created. The tournament will happen tonight. This is the first match. Ichiban versus Deuce Rodriguez. This is a four-man tournament. The four entries were carefully selected by the TPW committee. They had to also agree not to compete in the tag team tournament. Here we go. Deuce Rodriguez gets Ichiban on the ground early. Ichiban, the masked man here, dressed in the karate gi. We know he is of Asian descent. We know if he is the Ichiban that has historically competed here in Oklahoma, we can't be sure of that. Then he is a former champion as well. Holding light heavyweight titles and tag titles in the state previously. Ichiban, Deuce Rodriguez seemed to be having a very amateur match here. Fighting for position on the ground. It's the reversal, both men back up to a vertical base. However, the Ichiban that we last saw compete in Oklahoma seemed to have a slightly leaner body type, less muscular, less compact, so it wouldn't be hard to believe that this may not be the same Ichiban. Maybe somebody competing under that mask, different person. Wouldn't be the first time we'd seen something like that here in the state of Oklahoma. Ichiban gets Deuce Rodriguez down to the ground. Deuce sits out, trying to escape the double underhook there. Oh, very amateur German right there. One, two. Oh, gets his foot out on the rope there. One, two. Slightly different style, different style than we're used to seeing here in TPW. This has been almost all mat wrestling. Very amateur style, as opposed to the high impact, fast, high flying styles we're kind of used to seeing. Oh, big clothesline from Deuce Rodriguez. Oh, almost a three count right there. Deuce Rodriguez gave up his opportunity at the tag team title to be at this tournament. One, two, kick out of two. He and Romero normally tag together, and he for went the tag team title tournament to be in the singles title tournament with Romero's blessing, of course. Didn't work out well for Romero, as we saw. Splash Jackson left him high and dry in the finals. Almost single-handedly won the... Oh, single leg takedown by Ichiban. Flips over. One, two, into a bridge. Oh, didn't quite nail the bridge. Otherwise, he would have the three there. Gets right back to a front face lock. Good action early on here. Brings the arm. Got him in the wrist lock. Reversal by Rodriguez. He goes on the wrist lock. And we see another arm ringer. Picks him up for the scoop slam. Puts him down. Deuce Rodriguez, very powerful. One, two. He got a two. One. Kick out on one. Deuce Rodriguez staying on top of Ichiban. Hooks him for a suplex. One, two, kicks out at two again. Oh, thumb to the eye. So we realize early on Ichiban is not above taking shortcuts. Kicks the man while he's down. So there goes our nice clean technical match we were having. Going back to the rough tactics here as he chokes the man. One, two, three, four, referee slowly. Warning, Ichiban. The style is very similar to the Ichiban of old. Choking the man again. Leads me to believe this is the original Ichiban. Kicks the man in the kidneys there. Takes a lap around the ring, goes for another one. It's the Ichiban we remember. He was full of lots of kicks. You can understand why the TPW board would enter a man like this into the tournament. Oh, reversal. Deuce Rodriguez takes him over. Almost a three count right there. Both these men are up and comer. Well, we should say Deuce Rodriguez an up and comer. Ichiban, a ring veteran, takes a lap around the ring. Deuce Rodriguez ready for him. Not going to be caught off guard right there. Just not sure how to handle Ichiban here. That low crouching stance. Is he going for single legs? Is he just setting him up for a kick? 
got a tie up, we got an Irish whip. Oh, looks like a double palm to the gut. Oh, and then he falls on his back and delivers an Enziguri type maneuver. Oh, that big roundhouse kick. One, two. On the other side of the bracket, we will see the hardcore champion El Dragon Rojo get an opportunity to become a double champion as he will face Brian Lakewood. Oh, inside package. One, two. Oh, my goodness. I thought we had a three. Deuce Rodriguez stays on. Oh, gets caught up. Caught off guard there with a the kick. Fisherman suplex. One, two, three. Ichiban has defeated Deuce Rodriguez in the opening round of the final four tournaments. Here we go on the other side of the bracket. This is the opening round match. This winner will face Ichiban, who just defeated Deuce Rodriguez. Is he referee Mike Two in the ring? Brian Lakewood in the all yellow. El Dragon Rojo in the red mask, red shirt on the outside of the ring currently. With the black singlet. El Dragon Rojo, in English translate roughly into the Red Dragon. Very impressive win over All Action Anthony Jackson recently, as well as, of course, winning his hardcore title. Oh, big monkey flip from Brian Lakewood. This is the kind of action we see from Brian Lakewood. He's a former college athlete, had a chance to be a professional at one point in the football world elected instead to go into the professional wrestling world. Sends El Dragon Rojo for the Irish whip. Ducks it. Catches him. Oh, just jumps over him with a sunset flip. That man has some vertical leap. He just jumped over a six-foot man and performed a sunset flip. Don't ever take your eyes off Brian Lakewood. Looks the man from behind. Goes for a German and flips him inside out. Makes a full rotation on that. Very impressive. Brian Lakewood, as of late, has been very impressive here. A lot of people consider him possibly the odds-on number one contender for the Oklahoma heavyweight title. But currently, he is elected to enter into this singles title tournament. Winner of this match will face El Dragon. Or I'm sorry, will face Ichiban. Will it be El Dragon Rojo or will it be Brian Lakewood? Brian Lakewood with a couple of uppercuts right there. Sends the man off. Reversal. Ducks down. Oh, leaps frogs him. Then hits him. He's going for a hurt and can run, it looks like. Oh, no dragon or ready for it. Oh, my goodness. Sends the man down with a power bomb. Surprised that was not a three count right there. That kind of power shows you exactly why El Dragon Rojo is in this tournament. Perennial contender. El Dragon Rojo from south of the border, I believe Tijuana, Mexico. Not 100% sure on that. Bit of a language barrier when you speak to him to find out all those kinds of facts. Right now, he's stomping the man while he's on the ground, Brian Lakewood. He's got him in position. What's he going for right here? Goes up top. This El Dragon Rojo, as big as this man is, almost 300 pounds. Oh, it's a frog splash. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe Brian Lakewood kicked out on him. That was a very impressive maneuver from El Dragon Rojo. Might have injured himself a little bit right there. He's a little slow to get up. High-impact maneuvers like that will do damage to both you and your opponent. Oh, puts the man in a armbar maneuver. Scissors the arm with his legs and pulls back on the elbow and even shoulder joint a little bit right there. He's got him hooked really tight here. Is this going to be it? Is he going to get him to tap out? Lakewood's trying to maneuver to the ropes somehow, but he's doesn't have the size advantage that El Dragon Rojo has. He can kind of anchor him to the ground. Looks like El Dragon Rojo elects to release the hold, but the damage has been done. Double drop kick to the back of the shoulder blades there. Dragon Rojo appears to be very experienced in that ring. One, two, kicks out on two. Dragon Rojo firmly in control here. Puts the man in a sort of camel clutch-like maneuver. He doesn't quite have the weight pulling down. Lakewood was able to get his knees under him, so he's not able to really 
wrench back on that back, and he's only got one side hooked. But he does have a cross face type maneuver on the man's face, so he's doing damage. Is it a chin lock or a cross face? Hard to tell from this angle. But referee Mike Two is checking to see if the man wants to tap. Is the man losing consciousness? Is Lakewood lose? Well, nope, he's got that. Still, still in control there. Still moving the arm, still working in the maneuver. Looks like he's able to use his knees there to crawl. He's trying to get to a rope, break the hole, force the break. We got a danger. This is a Dragon Rojo could sit out and pancake the man's back. He's electing to hold on to that face, and you see it. El Dragon Rojo has to release the hold because Brian Lake makes it to the ropes. Lake with holding on to those ropes, but you can see a lot of damage has been done. He's not making, not able to get up to a vertical base. Oh, was he playing possum right there? Moves out of the way just in time, and El Dragon Rojo trying to take advantage of the man's position ends up crotching himself on that second rope. And obviously, we don't have to explain what kind of damage that'll do to you. It's giving Brian Lakewood a chance to recover here, but you can see he's got a lot of damage to the arm, damage to the shoulders right there, damage to the neck. Goes for the Irish whip. Oh, nearly decapitates the man with that spinning back kick. Looks like Lakewood's getting some momentum going here. Hits that big drop kick. High vertical leap on that. Still slow to get up, though. It's not 100%. Oh, just does a running drop kick to the man's face. Crowd getting behind Lakewood here, getting a little bit of momentum. Is this going to be enough to put the man out? Looks like he's got him positioned for something here. Is he going up top? Looks like he's going to go up top. Oh, having trouble climbing. He's he's hurt. Manages to get up to the top rope. This could be a dangerous position. i am giving El Dragon Rojo a lot of time to recover. It's like he has got enough. Wasting time. Needs to execute the maneuver as quickly as possible. Oh, he hits it. He manages to hit a big flying elbow off the top rope or from a seated position. Goes back up top again. Is this going to be it? Manages to go all the way to the vertical. Oh, big leg drop. That's it. That's a three count right there. So we will see Brian Lakewood. Brian Lakewood versus Ichiban in the finals later tonight to declare the first ever TPW singles champion. El Dragon Rojo retains his hardcore title. See him holding that belt on the outside. This was not a hardcore title match. Still a hard, oh, he's having trouble walking. That's not good. Dragon Rojo appears to be pretty injured. But we will see Lakewood versus Ichiban in the finals later tonight. All right, we're getting a rematch right here from last week. So last week, we saw Justin Lee in the K. Oh, he's going right after him, not even waiting to be in introduced. We saw Justin Lee versus Katie Luchador, the Katie Luchador's debut last week. But referee John Davis, senior referee John Davis, who you now see on the outside of the ring with the Canadian Luchador as his manager, I guess, decided in the middle of the match to reverse a small package that Justin Lee had executed on the Canadian Luchador. Causing him to lose, and we see John Davis interfering in the match again. Now, as I understand it, TPW did not reverse referee John Davis's decision last week. So it goes down, the record book says a win for the Canadian Luchador. Oh, Ray Martinez has kicked John Davis, he says, without a proper managerial license. He cannot be at ringside. John Davis has to. Oh no! Justin Lee wasn't paying attention. Takes a power bomb from the Canadian Luchador right there. Said as we saw last week, the Canadian Luchador wins because of his senior referee status. John Davis has not been suspended. Has not been fired because he would he basically has tenure in this situation 
So the best we can do is say that he can no longer referee matches involving his charge here, his ally, fellow Canadian, Canadian Luke Short. All right, Justin Lee makes a comeback there. Breaks the hold. Spinning elbow. Wow, very impressive right there. Takes the Canadian Luchador down. Justin Lee has got a bit of a chip on his shoulder this week. Wants to prove that last week he was going to win that match. A referee Mike Two. Oh, Canadian Luchador tossed. He pushed Mike Two into the ropes, which had the unintended, well, the intended consequence of crotching Justin Lee off the top rope when he was getting in the top rope for a position for some type of maneuver right there. Uh, it's like a Boston Crab, it's Canadian Crab, whatever you want to call it in this situation. Being applied, stretching Justin Lee's back, he manages to get to the ropes there. The referee Mike 2 tells him to break the hold. Looks like Canadian Luke Shore is focused in on the lower back of Justin Lee. Picks him up, Fryman's carry. Samoan drop right there. These men very evenly matched it would have. The difference last week was the referee, John Davis. Oh, another Samoan drop. John Davis will not be the referee this week, so we'll see if the Canadian Luchador can get the win without his ally at ringside. Goes for a third Samoan drop. He definitely seems to be focused on the lower back of Justin Lee. Fans behind Justin Lee. Justin manages to block it. Oh, hits a Northern Lights suplex. Goes for Northern Lights roll through with the bridge. One, two, two. So first Northern Lights suplex and the Northern Lights roll through. Goes for it. Oh. Looks like he's going for a slam, but his back kind of gave out on him. Probably from those Samoan drop and Boston crab maneuvers we saw earlier in the match. Oh. Canadian leg sweep. One, two, gets out on two. So the, the back abuse we saw earlier is up the strategy has already paid off on the Canadian Luch doors. It's caused Justin to misfire on his execution. Oh, and goes for another back maneuver right there. This time a back breaker into the knee. Justin, you can look at his face right there and see he's in pain. Okay, Luke Shore goes up top. What's he going for here? Oh, looks like he dropped the elbow right into the back of Justin. Kicks out on two, but damage being done to Justin's back. Having trouble Oh, this time he gets him in another Boston Crab type maneuver. This time he goes really high with it. It's stretching out the entire spine. Justin trying to get to ropes, but he can't seem to. Looks like Luke Shore's got him in a good position. Justin's strong young man. We'll see if he can power up here and make it to the ropes. Makes it. Luke Shore not releasing the hold. He's taking his entire four second hold there. Or the referee would have disqualified him. Justin Lee gets back to a vertical base, but unfortunately the back is wide open for more abuse. Going for a splash here. Oh, Justin Lee manages to duck out. Justin hooks him. Back body drop. Oh. Justin Lee doesn't have a whole lot left in the tank, it looks like, to counter that maneuver. Counter after that maneuver, I should say, to follow up. Come on, Lee, get up! Oh, Justin nips up. Apparently, he's got something left in the tank. Oh, looks like he's queuing up that foot for a kick. Big side kick. Oh, it's follow ups with another. Oh, goes for the spinning heel kick. Hey, Luchador ducked, and instead, he accidentally kicks referee Mike 2. Referee Mike 2 is on Dream Street. Katie Luchador sneaks up behind him. Oh, Justin catches it. He was ready for it. Oh, and it's with a Death Valley driver. There's no referee, though. Referee Mike 2 is unconscious. Justin Lee checks on referee. Ray Martinez asking for another referee from the back. Oh, Katie Luchador catches him. Catch on the referee. Oh, Justin manages to fight it off. 
Hooks him. Hits the future cutter. He's got him pinned, but there's no referee to make the count. Justly not really sure. Oh, no. It's referee John Davis. Yeah, there is another referee out here. Oh, hits him with a spine buster. One, two, three. Just makes a quick count. And I, I don't know if this is legal or not, but referee John Davis has made the count. And he's holding up the hand of the Canadian So That's back-to-back -back wins, technically, if, if it stands. I mean, referee John Davis. Ray Martinez asked for another referee from the back. Ray should have been more specific, I guess. It's the Canadians are going to town on just, just ducks it. Right hand, right hand, big right hand. Fighting off the Canadians. It's two on one here. Oh, finally some help for Justin Lee from the back. That's the big man AWOL. He's as American as they come, so I guess seeing his fellow American out here fighting these Canadians, he's come out to lend a hand. The Canadians have retreated. Referee Mike, too, might need to go get checked out. He's holding his face. This only goes to shake the hand of AWOL. Thank you for the assist. Oh, no! AWOL has kicked Justin Lee. Now, is he, is he with the Canadians? Well, we've seen a bad attitude lately from AWOL. We decide attacked his own partner after the match against when he and Grenade tagged against the Mexican combo platter, but we thought maybe that was just a personal beef, but no. It's the Canadian, the Oklahoma Stampede on Justin Lee. First to him as trash, since he's taken out the trash. What's he doing here? He's picking up the Canadian loot store and he's slamming him onto Justin Lee. Referee John Davis makes another three count. Oh, that Apparently, AWOL has now joined with Canada. Not only turned his back on his partner, turned his back on his friend Justin Lee, now he's turned his back on his country. Unceremoniously tosses Justin Lee to the outside. Apparently, Canada, the new Canadian, refer to themselves as New Canada, I guess. New Canada is in the house. They are making their presence known here in TPW. We've got John Davis, AWOL, and the Canadian Luchador apparently created a new faction here in TPW. And Justin Lee is their number one target. John Davis says, I have a light heavyweight and I got my heavyweight as part of his faction. All right, that is Sonny C making his way into the ring. The Oklahoma heavyweight champion unified after defeating Rocco in the best of three that became a four-match series, actually. And here he is with his first title defense against the big man, Terry Montana. He is a, the mountain man, they call him. Oh, knee to the gut. Big clubbing blow to the back this is what you're going to get out of Terry Montana. He's super powerful. Sonny C is not a small man, but looks small next to mountain man Terry Montana. Referee Mike 2 warns him. Oh, Sonny C tries to clothesline him. Doesn't even move the mountain man. Well, manages to move him a little right there. This is a tough first title defense. Probably the biggest man in Oklahoma, Mountain Man Terry Montana. Puts him in the bear hug when he goes for that Dez press maneuver that he's known for. Sonny C throwing right hands at the Mountain Man, trying to release that grip on his back. Just squeezing the man like a tube of toothpaste. Sonny C is hitting just forearm after forearm into his head. Okay, finally, Mountain Man releases the hold, throws the man into the corner, but a lot of damage done right there. Big knee to the stomach. 
Mount Man Terry Montana tells the referee what he can do. If I were referee Mike too, I would be hesitant to try to get into Mountain Man's face. Crowd firmly behind Sunny C. You hear them chanting. It's like Mountain Man setting him up in the corner. It's going to charge him. Oh, Sunny C manages to make a quick maneuver. Drop kicks him. Seizes his opening right there with a big schoolboy roll up one, two. Oh, not even two pounds. Sonny C needs to keep the momentum going here. Puts him in an arm bar. That's smart. Get the big man down. Keep neutralize that size advantage, that height advantage. He's got him in an arm bar. Keeps him grounded for the moment. Oh, Mountain Man just sticks a thumb in the eye, it looks like. And now he's just crunching the man's skull. Squeezing it with his hands. Pushing his neck into the ropes there. And then unceremoniously tosses him to the mat. It's a very, very tough first title defense. Maybe a very short title reign that may not even last one title defense. One, two. The elbow puts him down for two. Ref referee Mike, two. Warns him about grabbing the hair. Big suplex from the Mountain Man. Two count. The crowd is chanting for Sonny C. They want him to make a comeback here. Unfortunately, easier said than done against a man the size of Terry Montana. Terry Montana picks him up almost in a reversing slam position. Normally, you'd scoop the man from his inside thigh. Instead, he goes around the outside of his thigh and picks him up and just tosses him to the ground and this time he just plants that big boot into his chest all 300 plus pounds presses in on the chest of Sunny C oh and this time he goes right into the sternum with the same maneuver that will do some damage right there Sunny C a little worse for the wear right now Terry Montana's got a good chance of becoming the Oklahoma heavyweight champion in this scenario what we're we going to see here, he's got man by both ears. Takes him back to the corner. Sets the man up. Oh, big uppercut to the midsection. This time he pulls the man out to the middle of the ring. What do we got here? Big haymaker blow. Oh. Sonny C is not in good position right now. Now man puts that foot again in the back of the head I don't know what Sonny C if he's got enough left in the tank to make a comeback here so he tried to stand up for a second and Mountain Man wasn't allowing it. oh Mountain Man applies an ankle lock he's got him at, he's got a li little close to the ropes right there one two needs to get him a little closer to the center of the ring get between the man and the ropes it's like Sonny C is desperately trying to not get pinned make it to the ropes luckily for him mountain man just decides to release the hold mountain man holding him by the hair referee mike too not even bothered to warning him at this point can't blame him goes for the irish whip oh sunny c playing a little possum i guess right there had something left hits the ropes and just comes back firing with a big clothesline Oh, big drop kick caught the man in the jaw right there. Rips the shirt off. House of Fire. Sonny C in great shape. Goes for the Irish. Oh, nope. Puts him in the ropes. Now he goes for the Irish whip. Reversal by the mountain man. That, oh, no. He was going for the Fez press, I thought. Oh, he manages to put the man, catch him in midair, put him over his shoulder. Oh, what do we got here? He's got him hooked. And he gets the Miami Vice. Sunny Cutter, or Miami Vice as he calls it. One, two, three. Manages to beat the man with his finishing maneuver, the Miami Vice, and retain the Oklahoma heavyweight title. Very impressive win for Sunny C. Never easy winning the title, even harder staying champion. But he manages to win his first title defense against the mountain man, Terry Montana. You're still unified champion, Sonny C. Crowd favor here.
You see him displaying both title belts right there. Very, very impressive win for Sunny C. Mountain Man. All right, this is it. This is the finals of the TPW title tournament. Ichiban versus Brian Lakewood. Brian Lakewood in the purple attire. Changed since his opening round match. Where he wore the yellow. Now he's in the purple. One thing we have noticed is Ichiban back out to the ring here to, to face Brian Lakewood for the title. We've got Angel the referee. All right, single leg from Ichiban. Ichiban has changed his style a little from what we remember back in the old days. He was more of a martial arts only. Now he seems to have a very keen amateur style. We watched that opening round matchup where he defeated Deuce Rodriguez. A lot of amateur holds and once again right back into it. Single legs the man down, rides him out, keeps that hips pressed against him. Controlling the center of mass right there. Manages to get the underhook, pull the man over in tight. Now he's got him in the front face lock. Puts him into a lateral position, only gets a one count. He's riding the man out from behind there. This is actually very impressive. It's not necessarily the most exciting style for the fans to watch, but very impressive. Now he's put to do a side headlock and he's get back up to a vertical base. Oh, manages to trip the man and hold on to the headlock while doing it. It's very, very impressive right here. He's managed to hold on to that headlock again. He's got the side headlock. Lakewood trying to fight out of it. When you've got a high flyer like Lakewood, the best strategy you can do is ground him. Oh, looks like he hooked the man from underneath and then took him over. Again, very impressive amateur wrestling maneuvers here from Ichiban. Ichiban, of course, Japanese for number one. Oh, there you go. Lakewood's got a bit of a power advantage, it looks like. He's able to get up to his own vertical base and then use that vertical base to get a, his arms around the man and take him back over. Puts him into the corner, goes for the Irish whip. And big splash. Ichiban has lost his belt, his martial arts style belt. He wears a white belt. Oh, monkey flip from Brian Lakewood. Now, usually what a white belt would indicate a lack of experience, a beginner status. Oh, rolls through and hits the splash. One, two. And just get a foot into the ropes. Angel breaks up that count. And whatever martial arts discipline Ichiban is from, the white belt must symbolize something else. Oh, big karate chop. Oh, Inziguri kick from the back. Oh. Just a big roundhouse again. We saw that similar combination in the opening round against Deuce Rodriguez. That was the big setup that it eventually led to the end. Oh, wait a second here. That belt has come off, and now he's wrapped the belt around Brian Lakewood's neck. Not uncommon to see Ichiban cheat, as we saw in the opening round. It's very unique style. He likes to do... A little lap around the ring, then hit a maneuver. I don't know if that's to psychologically throw the opponent off. What he's doing with that? Oh, another karate chop. He's going for a bulldog maneuver. Yes. One hand on the head, one hand on the hip. Bull bulldog maneuver. A little unorthodox, but effective, obviously. One, two. Only two counts. The winner of this match will be the first ever TPW singles champion. Different than Sunny C's Oklahoma title, this is a TPW title. It is a singles title, would be considered a secondary title. Oh, reverses the suplex, hits one of his own. Brian Lakewood managing to get some momentum back. Big drop kick. Is that going to be enough? One. Oh, in the ropes. Brian Lakewood in purple, Ichiban in black. Ichiban with the mask. Both men, experienced wrestlers here in the state of... Oh, it looks like he got him some kind of maneuver to the throat or the eye. I couldn't tell exactly. 
backs were to us. The referee warning Ichiban, stop cheating. Good luck with that. We're right in front of our ring announcer. And acting TPW official Ray Martinez on the outside there, sitting at the timekeeper's table. Here we go. Oh, big roundhouse again to the gut. Sends Brian Lakewood for the ride, ducks the clothesline. Oh, wait a second. Some female has come to the ring and has tripped Brian Lakewood. Angel didn't really see it, but now she sees somebody out there that shouldn't be there. I don't know who this mysterious female is who has come out in the finals here to assist Ichiban. Now she's mad at the referee for some reason, I guess. Women don't tend to get along. Oh, now they're, the two girls are rolling around here fighting. I don't know if these two have some kind of history or what. She has come out to aid Ichiban and referee Angel and this mysterious woman on the outside have been separated now the whole locker room is coming out we see the heat seekers we see x cow we see romero we see sunny C we see a wall we see mountain man whoa wait a second now oh romero and sunny c decide to help angel out there and they launched her into the mysterious female quite the pull apart we're seeing here Referee Angel, not to be trifled with, finally had somebody her own size to take out some of that aggression on. But either way, your new TPW champion is Ichiban, and apparently he has a new manager. Very impressive win over Brian Lakewood.